Welcome, this is Sterling Hardware. My name is Colby, and we've got a little bit different of a video for you today. So as you know, normally we cover Starlink topics, tutorials, news, updates, product reviews, that sort of thing. But today we're gonna to be talking about a Starlink competitor. Well, at least an upcoming Starlink competitor. We're gonna be talking today about Amazon's Project Kuiper. Several days ago, I posted up a poll on the community page on the YouTube channel asking you guys whether you would be interested in hearing about Project Kuiper and an overwhelming majority of you said yes, which I was really excited about because any, any new technology, any new service in this industry of low earth orbit space internet is exciting and great to talk about. So I'm excited to make this video today, give you all the latest updates on what's going on with Project Kuiper behind the scenes, and also kind of give you a little bit of a comparison between Starlink and Project Kuiper. So in this video, my goal is to provide you with some information on what's going on with Project Kuiper, a little bit of the history of it, uh, their proto-flight mission that they've been doing since about October of last year, and then their next step, what they're doing as far as satellite production goes, when they're gonna be launching their satellites, and then a little bit, we'll talk a little bit about the availability of their services overall. And of course, I'll be trying to compare them to Starlink as much as I can based on the limited information that we have. Sound good? Okay, let's do it. So before we get too into it, I'm sure a lot of you don't even know what Project Kuiper is, you've never heard of it, or you've just heard that it's a Starlink competitor that should be coming online pretty soon. So let's spend a few minutes talking about the context, a little bit of the history. Project Kuiper was announced by Amazon in 2019. They've pledged over $10 billion to this project. It's Amazon's second largest capital expenditure. So it's very clear that Amazon is going all in on low earth orbit satellite internet. Project Kuiper will be a low earth orbit satellite internet constellation consisting of over 3,200 satellites. Amazon originally planned for about a decade for full constellation deployment. However, their FCC approvals kind of hinge on having at least half the constellation done by mid 2026 and then the full constellation completed by about 2029. And just like Starlink, Amazon plans to deliver high speed, low latency satellite internet all around the globe, mainly to underserved areas that don't have many good broadband options. They're gonna be offering a range of different service types and hardware types, and they're gonna be targeting not only the business and enterprise customers, but also home internet users, travelers, digital nomads, that sort of thing. So overall, as far as what Project Kuiper is, it's Amazon's answer to Starlink. It's gonna be a very similar service. It's gonna operate the, the same way as far as the concept goes, but what's very different is how they're going about it. And I'll talk a little bit about that later in the video. But first we need to talk about the first major milestone in Amazon's Project Kuiper's history, which was the protoflight mission. The protoflight mission was Project Kuiper's first two satellite launches. So they launched KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2 in October of 2023. These are the first two prototype satellites that Project Kuiper deployed. And the goal of that mission was to completely test their system end to end, but also to test their maneuverability in space. So if you have a low Earth orbit satellite constellation, part of your responsibility for safety is to make sure your satellites can actively avoid debris and also actively deorbit in case they ever needed to. So like I said, the protoflight mission started in October 2023 and they actually achieved a 100% success rate. So they were able to test their maneuverability as far as getting the satellites into the proper orbit, but also they were able to test completely end to end their internet system. So they were able to successfully send data from a user terminal, like a dish, up to the satellites using, uh, they also tested the interlinks between the satellites. So they have laser interlinks, just like Starlink's space lasers on their satellites. And then finally, they were able to send a message down to a ground station where it could be exposed to the public internet. So their system using the two first prototype satellites was completely tested and validated. And now they're actually in the last stage of the protoflight mission as we speak. The two satellites, KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2, are being actively deorbited. So they're being thrown down in altitude and eventually they will just burn up in the atmosphere. 
Amazon refers to this as an atmospheric demise, but the proto flight mission was extremely important because it tested every part of Project Kuiper's system. And with those tests 100% successful, it now means that Project Kuiper can move into the final full deployment of their satellite constellation. So they had a ton of data that they collected from this proto flight mission not only for the maneuverability like I talked about, but also as far as performance goes between the satellites and the ground station and the satellites and the user terminals. So the dishes that they've actually produced and have been testing. So next up for Project Kuiper is to scale up the manufacturing of their satellites. They need to produce thousands of satellites to be able to launch them in orbit because that service is nothing without the satellites. You need the satellites and the ground stations in addition to producing the user terminals to have a successful satellite internet system. Amazon has built two factories in Washington state in the United States. They'll be able to produce about five satellites per day. They do all of their satellite deployment, testing, and manufacturing all in-house. So everything's done by Amazon themselves. And once they produce those satellites in Washington, they actually just ship them directly down to Cape Canaveral, Florida, so that they can be ready at their processing center that they've also built down there. Amazon is also installing ground station gateways around the world. The ground stations are important because that's what the satellites communicate to after they receive data from the dish, from your user terminal. They shoot that signal down to a ground station and which is exposed to you know, the terrestrial fiber network of the world. That way it can get to the internet. So that's what Amazon has been doing kind of behind the scenes quietly over the last year or so. They've just been scaling up their production of their satellites in terms of building their facilities and getting the design finalized and everything. Okay, so the space stuff is out of the way. Let's talk about hardware, which is my favorite part. So Amazon has shown off three different user terminals. So it's clear that they're gonna offer different levels of hardware and different levels of service depending on your use case, kind of like Starlink does. But Project Kuiper's user terminals are super interesting because of the initial specs that they've kind of released. So they're gonna have a standard unit, kind of their general unit for residential home internet, but also for business use cases if you have kind of a low bandwidth situation like you're a small business. That terminal, they say, will measure under 11 inches by 11 inches square. It'll be about an inch thick and it'll weigh about five pounds. Now, in comparison to a Starlink dish like the one behind me, this is the Gen 2 standard actuated, that is tiny. And Project Kuiper's terminal is going to be very small compared to this, very small and lightweight. But at the same time, Amazon also expects that their standard dish will be able to have speeds up to about 400 megabits per second, which is pretty impressive and actually matches what Starlink's doing right now. So if they can get that kind of performance out of that small of a form factor of dish for their standard antenna, that's pretty impressive and exciting. The other thing is that Amazon says that they've been able to work their production cost for that standard terminal down to under $400. And that's really important because that means they can pass some of that savings on to you as the consumer. I expect that their standard dish will be priced well below Starlink standard dish, which is $599 right now. In addition to the standard dish, they're gonna have a mini dish. So the mini dish is even smaller and lighter. It's gonna measure about seven by seven inches square. It's gonna be less than an inch thick and it's gonna weigh about a pound. And that should be pretty exciting to you if you wanna use satellite internet for things like camping. And the one pound weight actually kind of turns this mini Project Kuiper dish into something that's useful for backpacking, for bike packing, for other, for kayaking, other, anything that you're gonna be out in the remote wilderness with limited communication potential, you're gonna be able to carry this small mini Project Kuiper dish around because it's so lightweight, it's so small. The only question that we don't have really about any of these units is how much power they use. That will be really, in my opinion, the limiting factor as far as use cases go, because even though it'll be small, if it uses a lot of power, you know, where you, where's that power gonna come from? So their mini dish is expected to have performance up to about 100 megabits per second, which is decent enough for what most people are gonna be using it for in those ultra portable situations. And then finally, the last model that they've talked about and shown off is their enterprise grade, kind of business grade, high bandwidth model. You can think of it like Starlink's high performance unit where it's just intended for those large high bandwidth applications. So Amazon says this dish, which will be a lot bigger obviously, is capable of one gig speeds, which is pretty awesome. 
And besides the renderings and photos online where Amazon has shown off these user terminals, we don't really have any other information available on them yet. We'll just have to wait and see. Next, let's talk a little bit about the availability and timeline of Project Kuiper because I know that that's one of the most common questions that I will get is when will Amazon's Project Kuiper internet be available? Amazon has given us some information actually. So they've completed their proto-flight mission and they're gonna start their full-scale satellite deployment, hopefully this year. Hopefully by the end of this year, they'll start launching satellites. But Amazon also says that they hope to start serving their earliest customers by the end of this year. So I would have to assume that they need, you know, quite a few satellites to start actually serving customers globally maybe 100, 200 satellites, I don't know. But really the release and availability of Project Kuiper is dependent on their satellite deployment schedule. So if they can get things going on schedule and get those satellites going at a regular cadence, then we could probably see Project Kuiper come online pretty soon, like within the next year. And they actually have to get going pretty quick because like I had mentioned earlier in the video, their FCC approval for their satellite constellation depends on having at least 50% of their satellites deployed by mid-2026, and they've got to be fully deployed by 2029. But as fans and consumers of home internet, we have to kind of be a little bit less excited because what Amazon has said is that they're gonna serve businesses and enterprise customers as their early customers. So they're gonna kind of be opposite of Starlink in that sense, where Starlink took on home internet customers as their initial public beta testers, Amazon's not doing that. They're gonna be looking at large corporations, you know, signing contracts with Project Kuiper. They're gonna set them up first and get them online er as early as possible as they can, as, depending on the satellite deployment, before they take on those home internet customers and portable customers. So Project Kuiper versus Starlink. What are some of the differences and similarities? Well, I've covered some of those similarities already. So. They're both gonna be low Earth orbit satellite internet constellations. They're gonna operate the same way in the sense that you have a user terminal, which is like a dish, like you see behind me, communicates to a satellite orbiting hundreds of miles overhead. That satellite forwards the data down to a ground gateway station, and then it's entered into the public internet the, via the terrestrial grid. One of the big differences with Project Kuiper and one of their main advantages is going to be their integration with Amazon Web Services. So if you don't know what Amazon Web Services is, it's basically like their cloud system. Uh, a lot of the internet, a lot of apps, a lot of data services that operate on the internet are run on AWS. It's one of Amazon's most profitable businesses. They make a ton of money serving AWS to clients. And the AWS integration with Project Kuiper is important because it enables fully secure and fully encrypted end-to-end -end traffic over the Project Kuiper network. So if you think about how Starlink is configured, you know, in their, in their kind of overall network concept, with Project Kuiper, there's gonna be one additional layer in there, and that is AWS. So before data gets to the public internet, it can actually be routed directly into AWS servers meaning theoretically that if you have a business or a government that wants to keep their information completely secure and private, theoretically, they could take a dish almost anywhere in the world, transmit their data up to the Project Kuiper constellation. Project Kuiper sends them down to one of their ground stations, which is connected directly to an AWS hub, feeds that information right into their cloud system. So it doesn't even have to touch the public internet to be transferred literally anywhere around the world in a matter of seconds. Actually, probably less than seconds, milliseconds. And that right there is extremely awesome technology. And I know it doesn't sound that cool or interesting from a home internet use case, but just know that that's gonna make Project Kuiper a ton of money being able to do that for large businesses and governments. Starlink obviously has the advantage of being first and already being available. So Starlink has been available since late 2020, early 2021, and they've just continued to expand. They have over 3 million customers at this point as of May 2024, and they're continuing to improve every component of their service. So they're improving latency, they're improving download speeds, upload speeds, they're continually improving their hardware. So not only their satellites, but they've also improved this, the user terminals, the routers, the dishes, everything. So Starlink has had a lot of time to iron out some of those early issues. On the other hand, 
Project Kuiper can learn from Starlink's mistakes. So Amazon can sit there and look at what Starlink has done and how it's worked out for them and then adjust their own strategy based on that so they can kind of avoid making some of those mistakes. Cost. I th cost, I think, is going to be an advantage to Project Kuiper, even though we don't have any concrete information. Based on what Amazon has said about the production costs for their standard dish and the cost of their mini dish, I think it's clear that it's going to be the more budget-friendly option. The cheapest hardware in the United States from Starlink at regular price still costs $599, which is extremely expensive. If Amazon can undercut them by even $100, $50, then they're gonna win over a lot of customers just based on that alone. But I think it'll be even more drastic than that. I think that the mini terminal from Project Kuiper will likely be in the $200 to $300 range, if that. The one thing as far as cost that we don't have any information on yet is the service plans from Project Kuiper. So we don't know what they will look like, if they'll include unlimited data, if they'll offer different priority levels like Starlink does, but Starlink costs $120 per month in most of the United States. That's their standard home internet price. It's unclear if Project Kuiper will be able to offer service for lower than that. And the last thing that I wanted to say about Starlink versus Project Kuiper is that I kind of, for this video, had to take off my Starlink fanboy hat and my bias and kind of look at this objectively. And when you do that, you kind of realize that Competition is good for everybody. It's good for me, it's good for you, it's good for Starlink, it's good for Project Kuiper. So I am personally rooting for Project Kuiper and Amazon to be successful because that just means better performance from Starlink, lower prices from Starlink, and more innovation from Starlink because they're gonna be forced to compete with Amazon for customers. If Project Kuiper can come in with these smaller and lower priced dishes that have similar performance, and they can come in with lower priced service plans, that's gonna force Starlink to adapt and they're gonna be coming out with better equipment. They're gonna be responding to more of their customer feedback as far as pricing and features on their dishes go. And just overall, Project Kuiper entering the scene is just gonna be better for everybody. So even though I'm a Starlink fan and I always will be, and this channel will always be about Starlink, I think that it's super exciting to see what Amazon's doing and see where this Project Kuiper constellation goes. That's all I had for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about Project Kuiper and Amazon. Do you want to see more of this type of video as updates become available? If so, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you have any other questions, like I didn't cover something about Project Kuiper that you're interested in, go ahead and also leave me a comment and I'll try to answer that. Maybe I'll make another video in the future addressing some of those popular questions. As always, I really appreciate you all watching and supporting the channel and I'll talk to you in the next video.